Hello. In this video we're going to go over making a simple text-based adventure game similar to the Dragon Realm game described in Chapter 6 of Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python, um, which I've got on the screen here. Um, so text-based games were the predecessors to modern video games. The first text-based games were created in the late 1970s um, and a couple of the most famous ones were called Colossal Cave Adventure, which was pretty much the first computer game ever made, and another big one was called Zork. Um, and you'll hear those kind of in uh, nerd circles, so to speak. Uh, nowadays, they're still kind of uh, famous in certain groups. All right, so anyway, let's get started uh, making our own game here in Python. We're going to use this project to practice using functions in our programs mainly. So pay close attention because I want you to make your own game very similar to this one. Okay, so we are going to write a game very similar to the one here in this chapter, but I'm going to add our own little twist to it. Okay, so let's get get started here. Um, the first thing, I'm just going to add a uh, description here at the beginning with some details as always. Um, maybe a date. Uh, whatever the date happens to be. And then a brief description. So this is a text-based uh, I'm gonna make a space adventure game I guess um, so space I, I'm into science fiction and stuff so when you make your game you can make it about absolutely anything you want I'm just, I just off the top of my head decided to come up with a space theme as opposed to a dragon fantasy theme like what's in the textbook there okay um, so we've got that stuff at the beginning there, and I want to import a couple modules, okay? So we're going to have to have the random module to make a random choice in the program, and another new module we haven't talked about before called the time module, and uh, I'll show you how that works here in just a second. So the main thing we're going to use from the time module, let's just look at this first, is the sleep function. So let's just, I think it'll work, it'll be easier to understand if I just show you, so hello. And then I'll say like time dot sleep uh, three for instance, and I'll print uh, hello there. Okay. So if I just save this, and I need to go to name, so I'm gonna, as always, just go ahead and save it in my uh, Python files folder here. I'll call it uh, space adventure dot pi. Um, and again. You can do anything you want. You don't have to do space or dragons. You can do whatever, whatever you like. Okay. So if I save this and then run it, we'll see what happens down here in the shelf. So it says hello, and then it's waiting, 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 and then it says there. So I'll do that one more time. So you see, so hello, wait, 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 there. Okay. So what the sleep is doing is just saying, okay, sleep for three seconds. So just wait. Don't do anything for three seconds and then continue running the program, okay? So I just want to introduce you to this here. It can be useful in a variety of ways. We're just going to use it kind of in the simple way in the uh, in the game here. Um, we're going to use it to kind of build suspense when in, when we're printing out messages to the, to the player, okay? So that's how that's going to work. Um, nothing too fancy there. Okay, so hopefully that's not too hard to understand. If you put a different number here, like... Uh, five instead of three. It would wait five seconds before doing the next thing. Um, I think we'll just go with two seconds most of the time because you don't want to want it to be too long or it's just kind of too much. Okay, so um, we're going to use functions to break up our our program into related pieces of code. Okay, so the first thing I want to do here is define a function using the def keyword to display um, an intro to the game. And this is just, all this is going to do is print out um, like some introduction message. So I'm just going to kind of come up with this off the top of my head. Um, it is the end of a, it's the end of a long year of uh, fighting space criminals. Okay, and uh, this is just going to kind of be silly because I'm coming up with it off the top of my head. Um, say like you come to a crossroads on your trip home, oh, not trip, trip home, uh, one path leads home, let's say, where you will be hand 
handsomely rewarded for a job well done. Okay. And the other leads, uh, let's see, what, what are we going to do? What's, what's going to be something bad, something spacey? Um, I'll say leads through a gamma ray burst that will disintegrate. Uh, I spelled that wrong, I think. Disintegrate you. Okay, so gamma ray burst is uh, kind of a astrophysical phenomenon where a something like a star going supernova emits a bunch of radiation. So that's going to be kind of... In the dragon game, the options are you go into a cave or a dragon gives you gold or it eats you. So I've got a similar situation where you're either going to get rewarded by all of your fans when you get home or you're going to accidentally walk through this gamma ray burst that's going to uh, kind of blow you to smithereens or something like that. Okay. Um, and then I'll do one more print with nothing, just to print out a blank line. So I space things out and make it look nice. Okay. So this function is just going to display an intro to the program. It doesn't do anything fancy at all. Okay. It's just, uh, let's see, five print statements here. Um, so this is should be very familiar stuff by now. So if I say display intro, um, right now all it'll do is so I'll save my file and run it. It's going to come down here and it's just going to print out these things, each one on its own line. Okay. And I just did that, each one on its own line. Because if I did it all on one line, it wouldn't really fit on the screen and it would be harder for you to read. But you could just do it all in one print statement too if you want. That would be fine. Okay. So we're going to want to display the intro. But uh, one thing, remember that all of my functions should be at the beginning. Because if I tried to go up here and display intro before I define it, so if I run this, um, I'm going to get an error. See down here it says name display intro is not defined. That's because I'm using this before I define it. Remember the order of execution in your program, you start at the beginning and go, you know, one instruction after another. So in this case, I'm saying import these modules, display intro, and then define what display intro means. But I tried to use this before I defined it, so that doesn't make any sense. So usually the best practice is just to put all of your functions, so the order of things in your file, you can have comments at the top like this if you want, but those aren't required, and then any import statements you want, those go next, and then all the functions you want to define. This is the best way to lay out your file, okay? So import statements, then define all your functions, then you can do code which uses the functions you defined uh, beforehand, okay? So again, it, it's just like using a variable. I can't say like print a, a equals five, um, so if we try and run this, this will also give me an error for the same exact reason that saying display intro before I define display intro doesn't work. It says A is not defined because I tried to print A before I told the computer what it meant. So if I did A equals 5 and then print A, um, of course that's very familiar to us by now. That's pretty simple. It defined it and then it understands what A means by this point. So it's the same situation with functions. Nothing too complicated. Okay. So I'll leave the display intro, but now I want to do some other stuff. Um, present them with a choice, for instance. So I'm going to define another function called choose path. Uh, okay. And I'm going to say, I'm going to have a their answer, and I'm going to store it in a string called path, and I'm just going to set it equal to nothing. So this would be, I could put like a string, like apple or something here, but just before they tell me what their choice is, I'm just going to make it nothing. And I'll show you why I want to do that here um, now. So if you just put nothing between the quotes, it's just a string with nothing in it, okay? And then I'm going to say while path is not equal to 1 and path is not equal to 2. Um, and we'll go back and look over this in a second so to figure out what, what's going on here. So I'm going to say which path will you choose. Oops. Um, one or two are the valid responses, and I'll say enter it. Okay, so, um, and then at the end of this function, I'm just going to return the path that they picked. So, what's going on here, this is something called 
with the, this loop, what I'm doing here is something called, um, so I'll put a comment here, input validation. So the only valid responses here are one or two. If they enter like three or negative 10 or uh, Jim Bob or some other invalid input, I don't want to accept that because then my program is going to break. So generally when you actually design an application or something that you're going to have people in the world use, you do stuff like this. This is a very simple case. Usually it's much more sophisticated than this. But the idea is you do things to prevent them from entering uh, garbage values that will break your program, that don't make any sense. Okay. So what I'm doing here, I'm setting path equal to nothing to begin with. And then I'm saying while path is not equal to 1, which it's not right now because it's just equal to nothing. So nothing is not equal to 1. This expression here is true. And path is not equal to 2. That is also true. Nothing is not equal to 2. And then inside the loop, I say update the value of path to whatever they input when I prompt them for what path they want to choose. And then say they entered 3 for instance, it would go back to the beginning of the while loop and it would check if this is still true or not. So if they entered 3, then 3 would still not be equal to 1 and 3 would not be equal to 2. And so it would go back in and prompt them again. But then if I said 1 at that point, or if I said 2, let's say I said 2 for instance, so it's a little bit clearer. So if I said 2, then that would update the value of the variable path to 2, and I'd go back to the beginning of the loop again and say, is 2 not equal to 1? Well, that's still true. 2 is not equal to 1. But this part is false. True is e or 2 is equal to 2. So this whole thing is false. Um, and we haven't talked much about these. We'll come back to these later. Um, this thing here, when I say these, I mean this thing here, and. So that is saying... If this and this are both true, then continue doing the loop. So this is called um, a Boolean operator. And it combines Boolean values in a special way. So in this case, it's saying only this whole expression here, so this whole thing right here, is only true if both parts are true. Um, OK? So that's the condition there. So if path is not equal to 1 and path is not equal to 2, keep asking them to enter a choice. And let's just um, go ahead and call choose path. Call the function here. So you can see how this works in action. That might be a better way to look at it. So which paths will you choose, 1 or 2? So if I enter, like, uh, I don't know, fox, that's not 1 or 2. So this condition is going to still be true because both of these are true path is not equal to 1, fox is not equal to 1, and fox is not equal to 2. Same thing if I entered 3. Um, 3 is not equal to 1, and 3 is not equal to 2. But as soon as I enter a valid value, like 1, then 1 is equal to 1, so this is false, which makes the whole thing overall false, and I'll stop exiting, the, and I'll stop doing the loop. So I hit enter here, it'll accept that as valid input, and then return it and exit the function, and that's all the code I have in the program for now. Okay, so this is, again, called input validation, just making sure they're providing a correct value so the, it doesn't break the program later on, all right? Um, all right, um, so let's add one more function here. I'm going to define, using the def keyword, um, a check path function, and it's going to take an input of the uh, chosen path, okay? And I'm going to say, this is me just coming up with some silly stuff again, and you're free to make your own uh, little story in this game. That's the, kind of the fun part. Um, so you head down the path, and then I'm going to use the time.sleep that we talked about to kind of wait for two seconds to build some suspense. And then I'm going to say, um, let's say there's an asteroid nearby that looks familiar. That must be a good sign. Okay, and then I'm going to do another sleep so for some more suspense. It's a nail biter. And I'm going to say, um, but your skin begins to tingle. That's not good. 
and then I'll put a blank line for instance and this like again the blank line and what what the text I'm using that's completely up to you that's just the story of the game okay uh, and then I'll randomly let's say just randomly pick using random dot rand int which way was the correct way to go so every time you play the game it'll you know, it'll be a little different, so you don't just pick one every time to, to win. Um, okay, so I'll say if the chosen path is equal to the correct path, then print that was just, or let's say like that tingling was just the feeling of admiration from the citizens of the galaxy. Welcome home. So that's like if they win, if they pick the right way. And then otherwise they didn't pick the right way. So we'll print out some sort of message telling them they, they messed up. So say uh, an extremely energetic burst of gamma rays pass through you. And this is no good. You don't you don't want um, gamma rays passing through you. Bad bad news causing um, all of the atoms in your body to dissociate. And that, that's just kind of like a fancy word for fall apart. Um, there is no record left of your existence. So that's bad news, bad news. We don't we don't want to go this way. But it's all right. It's just a story after all. All right. So um, one little quirk here, though. Check out what what path is. So I did input, which path will you choose, one or two, and remember the input command always returns a string value, and notice that I was always comparing it to a string one and a string two. I wasn't comparing it to the number one like that, which I could do if I converted it to an int like this, but there's a risk there that if they entered like fox or apple or pear or something, some silly thing that's not a number, then this would cause an error, because remember... Um, well, if we try to convert, like, um, box into an int, it gives you an error because it doesn't make any sense to convert that. You could, the only types of things you can convert are things that are, like, nice, like 52 or something. It can convert that because that makes sense. Okay, the string 52, if you want that to be a number, it's just the number 52. But the string fox, if you want that to be a number, well, what the heck do you do, right? So if I added that and I converted that to an int here, I'd add another kind of complication that would mess up the input validation. So what we've done, what I've decided to do here is just keep it as a string. So what they're going to enter is actually the string 1 or the string 2. So down here, when I'm comparing it, um, if I if remember from the first week, if I do one and I check if that's equal to the string one, that's false because they're different. So if I did like one, is that equal to one, the string? That's true. Or if I did say string one, like convert it, is that equal to one? That's also true. So that's what I'm going to want to do here with the correct path is go ahead and convert it to a string so that whatever they their choice was, whatever the chosen path was, is being compared uh, likewise as a string. So I'm not comparing like the number one to the string one or the number two to the string two, basically. Okay, so we pretty much got the nuts and bolts of this down now. Let's just, so that's all the functions we need, I think. We've got, an, we're going to display an introduction. We're going to ask them for a choice with some imp, fancy impl, input validation stuff. And then we're going to check the choice they made. All right. So the last part here, um, I want to add functionality so that they can keep playing the game if they'd like. So I'm going to make a variable called play again. And I'm going to set it to equal to yes at the beginning. And I'm going to say while play again is equal to yes, or play again is equal to y, for instance. Um, and I could do other stuff too, but I'll just do these two for now. Then go ahead and display the intro and have them choose the path. And let's see, remember choose path returns a value. 
right here we see it says return path so it's going to send that once this once they've chosen their path it's going to send back their choice either one or two um, so I'm going to go ahead and store that in a variable called choice so when this code is finished executing it's going to return to this calling statement here and assign whatever choice they made to the variable choice in this case and then I'm going to use my check path function for that choice I'm going to say check path and then the input to that function here will be it's called the parameter is called chosen path but I'm going to input choice and remember that's going to be so choice um, equal um, is equal to one or two right all right um, and then at the very end here I want to say play again equals and then I'm going to ask do you want to play again? And let's say yes or why to continue playing. Okay, just like this. So what I did here, it's kind of like the input validation loop, but it's a little different. So this is if I want to just keep a program running until someone stops. This is like the sentinel control loops that we talked about previously. So we've got play again as a variable, and I just set it to, remember, none of this code up here is going to run until I call the functions. So this is just defining functions. This doesn't do anything. What does stuff is when I actually call those functions that I defined on these lines here. So once I get done defining those functions, the first line of this program that actually executes is this one here, where I say play again equals yes. And then I say while play again equals yes, or play again equals y, do this code here. So the first time through it is going to equal yes because I assigned it the value yes and so the first time I run this program it's going to display the intro it's going to prompt the user to choose the path and it's going to store whatever choice they made in a variable called choice and then it's going to check that choice using the check path function and then it'll tell you whether you won or lost and then we'll ask do you want to play again enter yes or why to continue playing and once they do that once they answer this question here whatever they answered will be stored in the variable play again it'll overwrite this yes that was there to begin with so we'll go back to the beginning if they entered no or carrot or fox or 45 or whatever that's not yes then this won't be true because this is very this is another boolean operator that's similar to the and but it works kind of the other way, kind of like you'd expect. It checks whether this is true or if this is true. Whereas and checks whether this and this are both true. Um, and you could, I definitely want you to read about this in the Invent Your Own Computer Games with Python textbook. It goes into a lot of detail with these Boolean operators and what are called truth tables to kind of lay out for you how that works. Um, but I just want to keep this video a little shorter to the point here, so we won't, I won't go into all of that. But definitely go check that out if you're a little confused about how these AND and OR operators are working. It's just combining Boolean expressions in a, in a way that makes a lot of sense with the way we think of the words AND and OR in English. So, um, anyway, what's going on? So if they entered something that's not yes or why, um, then this will not be true and so you'll stop and you there's no after that you'll just go okay well that's not true anymore so I don't execute the loop body again so just go to this line after the loop oh there's nothing there so end the program all right let's just go ahead and check it out and see uh, how our game works so it is at the end of a long year of fighting space criminals you come to a crossroads on your trip home one path leads home where you'll be handsomely rewarded for a job well done and the other leads through a gamma ray burst that will disintegrate you what path will you choose? I'll choose path number two. You head down the path, and then here's where the sleeping's happening. There's an asteroid nearby um, that looks familiar. That must be a good sign, but your skin begins to tingle. Oh, and then we got an error. So it looks like I... Uh, oh, I forgot to... Uh, oh, I didn't even want this. Why is that there? Oh, I guess I do, yeah. So we just want to sleep one more time. I forgot to tell it how long to sleep for, and that's what this error is there. So sorry about that. Let's just uh, run it again. And that's, you know, as you develop 
more complicated programs, you'll run into these little bugs that you have to go back go back and fix. You'll make a little mistake here and there. So, uh, same thing, I'm going to choose path 2 again. So you head down the path. Uh, there's an asteroid belt nearby that looks familiar. That must be a good sign. But your skin begins to tingle. An extremely energetic burst of gamma rays uh, pass through you, causing all of the atoms in your body to dissociate. There's no record left of your existence. Do you want to play again? Yes or no? Y to continue. So if I just enter uh, yes here, then it's going to start again. So same thing, I can choose that path, yada yada yada. Um, okay, let's see if I win this time. Aha! So we won. Uh, that was the admiration of all the citizens of the galaxy that time. So this time, if I enter no, or really anything that's not yes, and press enter, then I'll exit the program, because this loop condition here will not be true anymore. So this has been a, uh, a walkthrough of how to write this, uh, well not this, but any kind of simple text-based game. And there's lots of ways you can make this more interesting and more complicated. Instead of ha just having one choice here, you could have multiple, so you could do a, a similar thing where you do uh, more choices. So if you, if you choose one here, then you get these two choices after that, or if you chose two, then you get these other two different choices. Um, you can make it more and more complex and kind of build on it. And um, that's what I want you to kind of do in your own game, is come up with your own story, first of all. Um, if you want to do something like a dragon adventure or a space adventure, or you could do, you know, anything you want, underwater adventure or something. Uh, just any kind of interesting story, so it's kind of fun for me to look at what you did. And then at the same time, I want you to build on this. So add some complexity, like another choice, or maybe have them choose from three different options and have three different outcomes and things like that, okay? So I hope uh, you've had some fun learning how to make this uh, simple kind of game. And you can write your own program now. So there's going to be files to help you get started on this. You can get this file and a couple others, um, including the Dragon Realm file from the textbook. Uh, you can download one of the, those and use it as a starting point, or you can just start from scratch. Um, so your game should involve hopefully at least two decisions like I was talking about, not just like the one like I have here. Um, but it's okay if the game can end after just one decision, like the dragon eating you or the gamma rays gamma ray burst hitting you, but it should be possible hopefully to reach one more decision if you chose correctly on the first one, if that makes sense. Um, and also in your game you should use the time.sleep function in some way, and you should define functions like I did to group related bits of code together, like displaying the intro or asking the user for their choice. So those are related um, blocks of code, so here's those related pieces of code that are um, written as functions. Um, and you should also have some input validation like I did. So simple input validation like this when, the, when you're asking the user for a choice. All right? Thanks for your attention. I'll see you in the next video.